Hi, and welcome to another strength training workout. Today, I'll be using a 10 pound kettlebell or a four and a half kg. You can also use one dumbbell. So please don't not do the workout because you don't have a kettlebell. All the moves can be used with one dumbbell as well. 10 pounds can get a little bit heavy, so always start lighter. The first half of the workout is in a standing position. We have 45 seconds for each strength training move, 15 seconds rest. The second half, the next 10 minutes will be on the floor. So you can either do both or just do one if you're not comfortable on the floor or vice versa. We'll start with our warm up. So starting with the feet, a little bit wider than hip width apart. Just want you to start with a slow lunge and rolling the shoulders back. Just shifting the weight side to side. Waking up the body. Always want to make sure we're doing strength training, especially with heavier weights. Those muscles are nice and warm. So we don't pull anything. Helps reduce injury. Let's roll the shoulders forward. Same thing goes for stretching at the end. So important. Always stay for those stretches. Flexibility is just as important as strength for our mobility. Turn the toes out to the corners. We're just gonna change this into a little bit of a wider lunge. Knees going in line with the toes. Let's make the arms a little bit bigger as well. Forward and down. Reach up, swing down. Again, just shifting that weight side to side. more like this. Turn those toes forward again. I just want you to start with a little bend and straighten. So a little baby squat. And then add those arms in. We're going to keep this move, but we're going to slowly progress it bigger. So each time you bend, maybe go half an inch more, raise those arms a little bit higher. And a little bit bigger. Maybe slow that move down a bit. Four more like this. Make them your biggest and best. Weight is in the heels. Nice job. Tuck the chin. Let's roll down nice and slow, reaching for those toes. It's okay if you don't get there. Now I want you to give a little bend in the knees, tuck the tailbone, round the back, and roll up nice and slow. Finishing with the shoulders. Let's do that again. Tuck the chin. We roll down, feeling a gorgeous stretch in the back of the legs. Hold here for a minute. Bend the knees, tuck the chin, and roll it up. You can always use a chair for assistance. One more time. Chin up. Forward. And let's roll it up. Finishing with those shoulders. Give me some slow high knees here. Two more. Right leg, I want you to Rotate that hip back and forward. Good for opening up that hip and warming up the glute. Two more. You can hold on to something for balance if you need to. Back to those high knees, just alternating. And then left leg up and back. Doesn't have to be high, just want you to get that rotation, get those cricks and cracks out. Last time, high knees. For four, three, two, and one. Now switch that into some ham curls. So again, just shifting the weight side to side, heel comes up towards your bum. Let's add the arms, warming up the shoulders, out and in. Squeeze the chest and squeeze the back. Elbows are about a 90 degree angle. Let's 
Let's go four, three, two, and one. I want you to flex that right foot and scoop forward, stretching the back of the legs again, and then give me some wrist circles down. Four times on each side. Hips come back, scoop, reach up, big circle down. Same thing, other side. Scoop it up and then switch whichever way you were rotating your wrist. Two more like this. And we have our first move. Big reach and circle down. Okay, hopefully you are nice and warm. Shake it out. Our first move is going to be a squat with an optional pass through. So I'll show you first and we'll start the timer. So chest forward, hips come back into a regular squat and then press up or optional is to pass it through that leg. So it makes you bend a little bit deeper. Make sure our spine is straight. No rounding up and back. Here we go. I'm going to pass through the center out each time. Hips are back. Just one set of each exercise. Go at your own pace. That's the beauty of the timers. If you have lighter weights, you might be going faster. Heavier weights, you might be going slower. And finished. Next, we're gonna have a staggered stance. So kick that left foot forward, right leg back. Weight or kettlebell is in the same hand, your right. We have a staggered deadlift. We're coming up on that back toe. We bend down, turn the palm towards you. Then we come back up. So we come down, bend the elbow, a wide row, and lift up. Again, balance challenge here. Most of that weight. Think about 70% being in that right, excuse me, your left front leg. Squeeze the upper back and that shoulder. Hips come back. And that's it, same thing, other side. Let's go ahead and get into position. Shift the weight into that front leg, back up on the left toe. Palm towards you, proud chest. Hinge forward at the hips. Row, and push back up. Because it's a balance challenge, great idea to hold onto a chair here. Everyone's always at different levels. We've got to make this work for you. Keep that elbow wide, pull it up, and chest stays square so we're not turning towards that elbow. I want you to be feeling it in that right glute, that standing leg. And finished. Coming to a sumo squat, so the toes are to the corners. Again, weight in the heels, we bend down, elbow to the side with an upright row. Down, and we're just switching sides. Make each move its own. So come all the way up from that sumo squat first, then lift up. And our spine is straight, so we're not hinged forward at the hips. There's no rounding of the back.
push through those heels and knees are going out to the side in line with the toes. Nice job. Switching our stance to a parallel toes straight ahead. Weight is in the right hand. We're simply going to do a bicep curl, palm facing you with a calf raise. Here we go. Again, balance challenge here. The strength in our calf muscles is so important for balance and for the health of our knees. Sometimes we forget about them. As we're doing this bicep curl, think about keeping that elbow glued into your waistline. Really isolating that arm. One more. Same thing, other side. So switching the weight, but this time I wanna turn our toes to the corners. So think about turning out from the hips, doing a calf raise in this position, just working the muscles in a little different way. Here we go. Bicep curl and lift. It's not just if you, if you're thinking it's harder to balance, it is. Check your posture here too. Shoulders down and back, core engaged. A lot to remember, I know. Exhale on the work part of every move. Using your breath helps. Holding your kettlebell or dumbbell with two hands. Widen that stance. We're gonna turn our toes to the front. We're gonna lunge over to the side. Straight chest with a little twist. Elbow towards that knee. Alternating sides. If you have osteoporosis or osteopenia and you are advised not to twist the spine, then I just want you to come forward like that. No twist. So you guys do you. It's a great one for the inner thighs. Straight spine. Shift those hips back and left. Really drive through the heel to push yourself back up. Almost there. Coming back to, again, a parallel stance, we're going to do high knees. You have the option to tap the weight towards the knee or advanced is to pass it under working into those biceps again. You do you, tap or pass under. Now really pull that belly button into the spine and it's okay on this one to crunch a little bit forward. So we're using our abdominals as well. Tap or pass. A little crunch. Well, that heart rate's going up too, isn't it? Excellent job. Okay, next we're coming to a stationary lunge, way back with the right leg, weight in the right hand, up on the back toe. We bend down and come up. You can do this without a weight, or if you would like to intensify it, we're gonna drop it off, stand, and pick it up again. So again, it's forcing us to get a little bit lower into that lunge. If you have a dumbbell, it might be too deep for you to lunge into it, or you could even prop it up on a box. Or don't do any weights at all. Push 
push through the left heel. Great exercise, like going up the stairs, like picking something up off the ground. Nice work, same thing, other side. Stepping back with the left leg, weight in the left hand, up on the left toe, bending both knees. Pick your poison, no weight. Holding on to the weight the whole time or dropping the weight off. We've got a little shake in the legs. That's good. You're challenging those muscles. It doesn't challenge you. It doesn't change you. It's just a great, safe and effective exercises for our everyday movements. So important. Almost there, guys. Give me one more. Nice job. Last move before we move to the floor. We're going to do a bicep overhead press into a tricep and coming back down. Bicep curl, press, and down. Three-part movement here. If you have a weight, you're just holding each end of a dumbbell. And I'm just cradling the big part here of the bell. Slow and controlled. All right, nice job guys. Put your dumbbell down, grab some water, and meet me on the mat. Okay, on our mat, we're gonna lie down on our backs. So let's roll down nice and slow and safely. Knees are bent, feet flat on the floor. We're gonna press our lower back into the floor so our core is engaged in grabbing your dumbbell or kettlebell. My hand is just slid through the handle, so I'm holding the wide part. We're simply gonna press up, bend the elbow, bring it back down, a chest press on one side. Here we go, let's start that timer. Working unilaterally here really forces our core to fire up and engage. Again, we're on a timer. You're going at your own pace. Make sure those hips are flat on the floor, shoulder blades flat on the floor, relaxing your head and your neck. You're breathing, I know it's getting warm. Same thing, simply switching sides. So carefully move your weight to the other side. And get in position. Your elbow is wide. Maybe retuck those hips, engage that core. Here we go, pressing up, controlling down. Inhale as it comes down, exhale as you push that weight up. Again, everything stays still, except for that arm. Almost there. Next, we have a bilateral move, working both sides at the same time. So I'm gonna hold it with both hands. Elbows come down, we push it straight up in the center, 
and then we go overhead just as far as comfortable for you and back to center. So just alternating those two moves. Keep that core engaged. Drop the elbows. Elbows are close to our sides. Bring the weight or the kettlebell down towards your belly button. And as we go overhead, again, only as far as you're comfortable, it's okay. It does not touch the floor behind you. Working our triceps and our chest that inner arm area, the dreaded bra bul bulge, <laughs> firming up. Excellent. Next, we're coming to a glute bridge. So walk your heels in a little closer to your bum. And then I want you to put the weight on one hip bone. We lift the glutes, we come back down, shift the weight to the other hip bone, we lift and come down. Allow the glutes squeezing on top, allowing the glutes to lift the weight. We're pushing through our heels to lift the hips. And even though the weight is on one side, we lift the hips evenly. Again, exhale as those hips come up. Head, neck and shoulders are relaxed. for our glutes, our core, and our hamstrings. Nice job. Next, holding the weight or kettlebell in both hands again, holding it straight up overhead. We have three crunches, just lifting head, neck, and shoulders up off the floor. And then we have three skull crushers. So join me, just bending those elbows weight comes towards the forehead. Lift, two, and three straight up, then just belt bending the elbows, weight towards the forehead. Three and three. Relax your head during the tricep skull crushers here, so our neck doesn't bother us on those crunches. Just a few more. I'm gonna finish that last rep. There we go. Okay, weight is going to come behind us. Legs coming to a tabletop position. We do a reverse crunch, lifting the hips up off the floor. Tap the toe, bring it back. Reverse crunch and tap the toe. If this is uncomfortable for your shoulders, just release the hands to the sides. Do it as more comfortable for you. Alternating, tapping those toes. Keeping the lower back pressed into the floor. This is a great one for our lower abdominals. After this move, we're going to roll onto our side. Okay, rolling onto the side, supporting our head in our hand, and then put your weight or dumbbell in front of your hips. We're going to tap the knee, bringing it in, extend to the side, leg left. Extend, leg left. You don't have to have, you can have an imaginary weight if you like, or if you had a dumbbell, you could stand it straight up to tap it or hold it if you need to. Working into that hip, smaller glute muscles. A little spicy in that hip. That's a good thing. Last one. Coming up onto our elbows, lifting up out of the shoulder, grabbing your weight, elbow into the waistline, 
we're gonna press it overhead and back down. More like over shoulder. Here we go, lift and lower. This is our last move before we repeat it on the other side. So I'm gonna give you a couple options to level up here a little bit. Really isolating in that shoulder. I know it's tough. All right, last few seconds, hold it up there. If you really want to level up, you can come up into a modified side plank. We have 10 seconds. Or you can lower those hips. Hold and breathe. And we switch to the other side. And release, nice job. Quickly getting into that position, supporting the head. Weight in front of the hips. We bring the knee in, press it out to the side, lift and lower. Your other arm can be, again, holding maybe your dumbbell upright or supporting here in front, making sure that the hips stay stacked on top of each other so we're not rolling front or back. This works the core too. Almost there. Keep breathing. And we come up onto our elbow, grabbing your weight. And bend both knees. We press it straight up, straight down. Here we go. And then pull up out of that shoulder so we're not hunched down. Belly button is pulled into the spine. This is our last move before our stretch. No holding back. Go at your own pace. All right, option, hold it up there. Isometric hold. You're doing awesome. And last 10 seconds, option to lift our hips into that modified side plank. Here we go. Belly button in. And breathe. You're so strong. Two and one. Put it down. Congratulate yourself on a job well done. Let's stretch. You can sit in a chair, this last part of our stretches, or come to a seated cross position. Whew. Whichever way is comfortable for you. Elongate that spine, long neck, rolling the shoulders. And then flex the wrist, straighten the arms towards me. While we do this, can you get some wrist circles? Flex again. Bring the arms all the way out to the side. Open up that chest. And again, give me wrist circles. Releasing any tension there. Relax the arms down. Bring your right arm behind your back so the top of your hand is pressed into your lower back over towards your left side. Relax the shoulder down and then take your left ear towards your left shoulder, feeling that beautiful stretch and grow an inch. Bring the head back up, release that arm, other arm behind, again, Top of the hand pressed into the back. Release the shoulder down, right ear to right shoulder. Bring the head back up and release that left arm down. Right arm comes up, reaches high, and side bend all the way over. Other side and all the way over. 
I'm going to turn to the side. We're going to come onto our backs to finish our stretching for our lower body, a little bit more for our chest. Releasing down, extend the legs out and the arms all the way up overhead. Grow an inch from each of your fingertips and your toes, reaching as far as you can, lengthening the body. Inhale and F. Exhale, relax. Bending your knees, feet flat on the floor. A little tuck in those hips so the lower back is pressed into the floor. Keeping the tops of your hands and maybe even your all of your arm on the floor, I want you to bend your elbows and slowly slide them down towards your sides. Think of like a snow angel with bent elbows and then reach them back up. Continue to press your spine against the mat and keeping the tops of your arms and hands on the mat as well. You should really feel this in your shoulders and opening up your chest. A few more times, up and down. And one more time down. And then bring the hands towards your belly. Bring your knee in towards your chest. Hug it in and then lengthen the lower leg. Extend the top leg up and give me some ankle circles here. And then reverse direction. Gently pull towards you and then bring the lower leg back up again, crossing the ankle above the knee, opening up the hip, pick up the lower leg and hug the knees in. So now we're in a figure four stretch. Allow the hip to open up and relax. So good for all those squats and lunges we did. This is also my favorite stretch to reduce any lower back pain. Let's cross the leg all the way over Drop them to the side and then twist your torso all the way over to the other side. Inhale. Exhale. Knees come back to center. Uncross the legs. And then I want you to hug your chest with your arms, maybe even working your fingers behind those shoulder blades. Press your shoulders down. That should feel really nice. And relax the arms back down to the sides. Knee comes in, lengthen the other leg, open up that leg, give me some ankle circles. And reverse. Gently hug it in. One more hamstring stretch here. Bend the lower leg again. Flexing that ankle, crossing on top of the other knee, or above the other knee, and then hug it in. A few more deep breaths here. Cross your leg all the way over, dropping your knees to the side, and then torso twist around. Really stretching out that spine. It should feel amazing on the lower back. And really just relaxing into it. Let's unwind here, uncross the legs. And this time, crisscross the other arm on top as you give yourself another shoulder hug. Inhale, exhale, drop the shoulders, and big hug here. Release the arms one more time, and we have one more big lengthening stretch. Open up the rib, ca rib cage. Few deep breaths. 
Release the arms back down to the sides, bend your knees, roll over onto your side and push yourself back up. You are done. Thank you for joining me today. Let me know in the comments what size weight that you use. That really helps me plan my routines when I know what you guys are using and how you liked this new workout, of course. Thanks for working out with me. We'll see you next time.